Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I don't know if you've watched the other video, but for those of you who have, I've switched microphones, so it's a bit more convenient for me like this, since now I can use my hands. So, you might have guessed it by now, the subject of this hopefully short video would be to provide an explanation to Snell's, also known as Snell Descartes' law. This law is uh, belongs to the field of optics. Optics is a branch of physics which aims to explain the way light behaves in it, all of its interactions with other substances. Um, in this specific scenario we'll be discussing or showing how light behaves when it approaches the barrier of passing between one medium to another. Uh, who this subject might be uh, what's the word? What's the word? Relevant for, thank you, um, photographers, anyone wants to know why we see the rainbow, um, anyone who wants to understand why cameras do this, like you see me, and when I do this, sometimes you see the background goes black, now it's clear again, now it's darkened, now it's clear again. It's really, really uh, similar to the way we uh, close our eyes according to the amount of light uh, that uh, exists around us, the way the pupil in our eye works, etc., etc., etc. But let us begin from the beginning. Light is currently the fastest known substance in the universe. It travels roughly about 300 million meters per second, slightly faster than a student, than what the speed of a student that just finished all his final exams run out, runs out of the classroom. Um, it travels in direct lines and it has many interesting phenomena related to it. Um, it thanks to it we can see because our eyes are, are, are wonderful things one way of looking at them are as receptors of electromagnetic uh, frequency, uh, electromagnetic radiation, aka also known as light. Um, some other uh, creatures and animals on the planet can see other things like in infrared because their eyes or they have receptors for different kind of wavelength and frequencies and it's really 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 uh, interesting. Um, and before we g dive into this uh, subject, uh, this specific law uh, helps us to understand how light behaves when it moves from one medium to another. A medium is a name, a term for a coherent substance. Uh, in this case, we'll be discussing the movement of, uh, and yes, the background including me will be darkened when I put forward this uh, board. Uh, but I think we can cope with it. Uh, this shows the way light moves from air to water. We'll be discussing all of these terms here soon. Uh, first, it's important for me to uh, emphasize that um, this subject is very, very simple. Um, you just have to make sure that you're familiar with all the terms that are listed here. So, let's start. When a ray of light approaches the barrier of a medium, this is the line between the air medium and the water medium, okay? Excuse me if I'm not looking, looking directly at you, but at the, at the board. Usually I like um, having an eye connection. I think it helps the explanation be... Uh, it makes the explanation better. Um, in this specific case, uh, we'll try to make the best out of the situation. So, excuse me in advance. So, um, we have a ray of light advancing towards the barrier, okay, between one medium to another. And uh, the light that travels in a straight line here is faced with a dilemma. Light is made of energy packs called photons. Uh, a term used by Einstein in 1905 to explain the photoelectric effect. Wow, what a sentence, right? But actually it is really 
important because in 1905 uh, it was his year mirabilis of Einstein he did amazing things in this year major breakthroughs which we all in uh, we could say that we all enjoy the outcomes of this um, the discoveries today but I won't elaborate on this in a specific uh, video let's get back to the ray of light in and its dilemma here okay here it's faced with a dilemma single photon here has to decide whether it goes into the wild, into the unknown, into the new medium, or if it goes back just in the same angle that he came from, okay, and reflected, okay? So this is a point of a dilemma in any photon's life, and we have the brave photons that decide to proceed to the unknown new medium, and we have the other photons that are more, they are fond of what they know, so they choose to go back, in the same angle in which they came, okay? In term, in physical terms, we call the angle of the ray of light, which is always straight, by the way. All these ray of lights are straight. This angle in which the ray of light hits the barrier as theta 1, okay? Theta is a Greek uh, letter. And it's called the angle of incidence, okay? And it's it always equals the angle of reflection, okay? This is for the more um, standard... Uh, routine uh, preferring photons. The ones that are more brave, they have to remember Snell slash Descartes law and to figure out by themselves with no um, other uh, aiding methods of computing such as iPhone or, or portable computer or something like that um, and you see only my nose in the explanation. Very very nice. Uh, they have to figure out the angle in which they have they will proceed their journey and this law describes how to f describe the connection between four elements okay we have the refractive index of medium one which we'll soon uh, I'll explain to you what it is sinus theta one which is as we discussed the angle of incidence equals n2 which is the refractive index of medium two times sinus theta 2 which is and I'm saying it for the first time now angle of refraction and this is actually the angle in which the photons will proceed moving in the new medium so this we defined this we defined what is this refractive index of medium 1 let's discuss what refractive uh, index is it describes the ratio between the speed of light and the speed of light in the medium, okay? The speed of light, let me phrase it again. The refractive index describes the ratio between the speed of light in vacuum, okay? Which has a, um, a rough, roughly equals 300 million meters per second, divided by the speed of light in the medium. And so you might ask, what? What does the medium do to the speed of light? Well just as if, and I'll just put it aside for one second, let's say me and you go for a trip in the nature. If we go in an open terrain, our f speed would be faster than if we go in a forest, right? This, the, 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 this, is si this situation is similar to the way light moves in different mediums. In a more, what's called dense medium, the light travels more roughly, more slowly. It's not dense because it's, it's like optical density. It's not like the density regarding to gravity. It's optical density, but the general idea is, in order for, to explain it more simply, hopefully, it's like it's harder for the light to travel in this medium, and that's why it, li it, it uh, moves slower. On the contrary, if we move through a forest and then the forest ends and we start moving in open terrain, we can move faster, and that's exactly what the light does in lessly, in less optically dense uh, terrains. It moves faster. How do we describe this optical density by this refractive index? The air has a refractive index of one, meaning that it's when we say that the refractive index equals roughly one, we say that the light actually moves in air in the same speed that it moves in vacuum. That's what the value of refractive index 1 means. When we have 
in water refractive index of one and third 